Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the next episode of the Crack Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of original Ravnica, a set that I've said many times is actually a favorite of mine. I've actually had to re-record this because um, I tried to open it and it didn't work and then I opened it a little too hard. So I apologize, it's already a little bit open, but I have not seen what's in it. Uh, what we're going to be doing is actually determining what our first pick in a draft would be out of this pack. And what's so great about the Ravnica set in, in particular is that the commons and the uncommons are so powerful that oftentimes you don't really want to pick the rare. Uh, it's a very kind of backwards feeling to most sets, so hopefully we'll see some really interesting cards that you guys uh, either haven't seen before or very powerful cards that make you think in terms of limited a little bit different. So we'll see what we get. Um, I will say there are certain cards that I'm going to probably skip over if they're just vanilla and clearly not a first pick, then maybe we'll go over them. Um, but that being said, our first card is actually something that some people, at least in this format, like to overlook, which is a bounce land. And this is the green black Golgari Rot Farm. Uh, definitely good no matter what. Uh, even sometimes to be off color, it's okay. Uh, there are definitely situations where I would be okay with taking that. Um, so I'll leave that to the side for now. Dogpile is an instant for four. Deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of attacking creatures you control. I don't know how much I like that. It's good removal, but it's conditional and that you have to be swinging in. Uh, so really this is only good in a situation where you have a lot of creatures and they have one really strong creature that you can kill with it. Or it's good in a situation where you're already winning and you just want to make that happen quicker, which is fine, but in that instance I'd rather have a creature to help me up that clock. So definitely not what I would go for. <coughs> Excuse me. Civic Wayfinder is great. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. It is an elf, and when it, enters, uh, when it comes into play, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand if you do shuffle your deck. Uh, this is great for fixing, not only fixing, but just keeping your land drops consistent. Uh, a lot of times players have issues with land consistency, and this just helps you make those land drops. So uh, not to mention, obviously, if you're splashing a color or something like that, you can splash it off of the Wayfinder. So that would put up uh, in terms of Golgari Rot Farm. I think I'd rather have the Wayfinder. Uh, the next card is three and a white for a 2-2 Screeching Griffin with flying. Uh, you can pay red. Target creature can't block Screeching Griffin this turn. Definitely a good aggressive Boros card. Uh, I don't necessarily like that better than Civic Wayfinder. I think the value off of the Wayfinder is just a little bit too good. Um, and this is actually really easy to kill, which makes it a little less exciting. That being said, it is a 2-2 flyer. Evasion's always great, so I would not, uh, not fault somebody for wanting to take that over the Wayfinder. Uh, Muddle and Mixture is a great constructed card in Modern, not necessarily good in Limited. Uh, two blue for a counter target instant or sorcery spell. You can also transmute it, uh, which lets you pull out another card from your deck. Not a card I would really first pick, but uh, definitely an interesting pick for sure. Uh, Dryad's Caress, uh, six cast instant. You gain one life for each creature in play. If white was spent to cast it, untap all creatures you control. I don't really like life gain cards like this in Limited, uh, just because there are so many other things you would rather be doing, especially at six mana. Hopefully you would play something like a bomb creature or something like that that's going to start win winning you the game, not just padding you from the opponent. So not for me. Uh, Caregiver is a 1-1 one, one for one white. Uh, you can pay a white and sack a creature to prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. Uh, again, cards like these are fine because they stem the bleeding from certain cards uh, that your opponent might have. I tend not to like them. I'd rather be the aggressive uh, deck than the defensive deck. And at one, this is just going to die really easily, so not for me. <coughs> uh, Drake Familiar, one and a blue for a 2-1 Flying Drake. Uh, when it comes into play, sacrifice it unless you return an enchantment in play to its owner's hand. Um, that might actually be a little bit easier than people are thinking initially. There are There is a cycle of enchantments that uh, oftentimes you'll pick up a couple of just as incidental value. They're actually really powerful and limited, limited as well. Um, that being said, I don't think that makes this necessarily a good first pick. It's definitely low on that power level, and having to sacrifice that, per that enchantment definitely doesn't seem like what you would want to do. Excuse me, returning it to their hand. Um, Transluminant. One and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. 
You can pay one white and sacrifice it to put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying into play uh, at end of turn. So it actually comes to play at the end of the turn. This card is actually decent. And the reason being, if they target it to actually kill it, you can just sacrifice it in response. The other option is it does give you two blockers for the price of one, kind of. Um, and so if you block with this, you can actually sacrifice it in response. And at the end of the turn, you get that 1-1. One, one. So... I like this card. It's definitely a little bit above average in comparison to some of the other cards in this set. I don't think it's better than the Wayfinder, uh, but it's definitely good. Uh, Selesnia Signet. Most of you know what the Signets do. You can tap one and tap it to add two mana uh, to your mana pool. Selesnia is obviously green-white. Uh, I like these cards. They're ramp, but in limited, ideally at two, you'd be wanting to play a little bit more on the creature side of things. Cube drafting is a different story, so that's where these really shine. Uh, Snapping Drake is 4 for a 3-2 with flying. It's just a solid flying creature. I think the stats are decent. They're not amazing. Um, so I would consider picking that, but definitely not over the Wayfinder. <coughs> Pollen Bright Wings is 6 for an enchant creature. The creature has flying. When an enchanted creature dies, deals combat damage to a player, excuse me, put that many 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature tokens into play. This is the kind of bomb card I would want. Uh, this definitely gives me some aggression, uh, it gives me some evasion, and it gives me some creatures uh, to, to play with at the end. So I really like that card. Yes, it's a gold card, but uh, as you can see, there's Selesnia Signet, there's Bounce Lands, there's things like that. Multicolor stuff is really what this format's about, so it actually works out. Uh, flow of Ideas, six, draw a card for each island you control. There's actually a combo in this uh, set with this card, and it is very, very good. It lets you draw a lot of cards. That being said, I don't like like that first pick. And, uh, wow, that's actually great. Um, so, <laughs> Overgrown Tomb, original art. Uh, it is a swamp and a forest, and you can have it come into play untapped if you pay two life. This is definitely a good value card, not necessarily good and limited. Obviously, it smooths you out a little bit, but it's not first pickable. Uh, and that being said, our last card is actually a foil flash conscription. Uh, six cast instant. Untap target creature and gain control of it until the end of the turn. That creature gains haste until end of turn. If white was spent to cast this, uh, that creature gains whenever it deals combat damage, you gain that much life. Definitely a good aggressive card, but not above Pollen Bright Wings, which is absolutely going to be my pick out of this pack. So with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to leave a like or a comment if you did, and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. With that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.